Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we're going to try a technique that was requested by one of you guys, and it is called the Black Ice Technique. Now, this is not new. It is already on YouTube. I found two or three different people for sure that did it. I'll link their videos below for you guys to watch them, but I'm going to try it out for myself. I think the person that recommended this to me knows how much I love ink dragging and felt like this would fit me perfectly, and I think it will. So, the first thing we need to do is cut ourselves a piece of foil cardstock. Now, I have not tried it, but I'm pretty convinced you could cover regular cardstock in like aluminum foil on the shiny side and probably get the same technique. I haven't tried it, but if you want me to try it, leave it in the description and I will. This is just a piece of actual foil cardstock I had in my stash I didn't even know I had. So we're going to use that. Sorry for blinding you guys. You also need a piece of scrap paper. So this is my scrap paper, literally, that was wrinkled up on my desk from <laughs> being scrap. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some stays on ink, or you can use archival for this, I have seen. The deal with stays on is this is an ink that will dry permanently on porous surfaces. So that's where we're going to use stays on, and it also smells amazingly of almonds, cherries, almonds, something like that. So what you're going to do here is you're going to ink drag on the surface of your foil. And the idea is to get this kind of dark edge with a very lightly streaked interior. See how heavy the edge is and the interior is not as much? That's the idea. You want a heavier edge coverage with less on the rest of the paper. I'm going to turn this around and I'll show you something else. Take your paper and fold it up so you don't get your hands on it or in it. Again, I want more at the edge and then just a light drag everywhere else. And you could just spend a little time on the edge itself and get that drag like so. Don't worry about if it's crooked or straight. None of that matters. And I need to get that corner there. So I'm going to cover this up so I don't get my hands in it. Get that edge. You literally could just do the edges and not even worry about coming in any further on the page and getting the streaks in the middle. You, I mean, I've seen it done where they just kind of do the little edges and it's beautiful that way too. So I'm going to get those streaks done really well and I'm going to let that dry. And now I'm going to do some other stamping with my stays on. So I have not used my stays on in so long, guys. It's been a really long time. But I think this would be a perfect technique for our newest stamp set called He's Alive. So I'm going to use the image of Jesus here. And I'm going to do it sort of at the top of the page using that same stays on. Or like I said, you could use your archival. Now remember, this is foil and this is a wet ink. So you can't twist you want to sit that down and let it transfer. Give it light pressure all over the stamp, but don't twist because you'll get a shadow or a halo. And now we'll lift that up. And the beauty of this is if it's not a perfect image, that's really okay. It'll still be pretty like this. Now with stays on, you want to clean this right away. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this so it doesn't stain my stamp. Although a stained stamp is a good stamp. And I know you're going to ask me how I'm cleaning it. I'm going to clean it with my squeaky clean. This is my pumpkin spice squeaky clean. It was the last one I purchased. I'm still using it, but you can use any of your squeaky cleans, and I'm just going to use this little cloth and clean it off. Now, it will probably still be stained, but again, I don't really care if it's stained. I just don't want ink left on it. And you can see here, I was able to clean it pretty well. There's a little bit pulled up there. And again, I don't mind if my stamp is stained. I just don't want to leave any ink in it. So you can see I got it pretty good. So you can see there, I cleaned it pretty good. It is stained a little bit, but I'm really not worried about that. I just don't want any ink to transfer from it. So I want to make sure I got all the ink off of it. Now I think what I'm going to do is use the palm leaves from the same set and go around the edges, kind of like I did in the video the other day. So I'm going to use the same ink and my palm leaf. And I just want to add some to the edges. I think it will be pretty to kind of create a frame of these. So there... Oh, it's still a little wet, so be careful. Then maybe coming in here. Pretty. And I may do a couple more of the smaller size. I think I'm going to stop at that. I'm not going to make a complete frame. I'm just going to go there. Now, I'm going to hit this with my heat tool to dry this ink. I put some of that on pretty heavy, and I want to get it good and dry. Using my stays on ink again, I'm going to stamp He is Risen underneath the image of Jesus. And this is going to be a little harder. And that's why I wanted to dry it because I didn't want to put my fingers into anything as I was doing this. I'm going to hold this very still and not wiggle. I am rocking slightly back and forth and that's because I want the ink to touch everywhere, but I don't want to twist. That's what I was trying not to do. And then I'm also going to do just as he said here. 
I was afraid I wiggled there a little bit, but it looks okay. All right, with your stays on, always save this little piece and put it back over your ink. That'll keep it from drying out very, very quickly. And I've had the same stays on pad for a very long time. It holds up real well. All right, let's dry this. I'm just gonna press this down while it cools just to kind of help it be a little flatter. I don't wanna touch it with my hand just in case it's not dry. Of course, here I go testing it. No, that's good. We're good. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Versamark ink. And from what I have seen, the technique I think worked the best was where you just take the edge of the pad and you just slightly kiss the page as you drag down. Um, one person even said, just let the weight of the pad do the work. So just drag down your foil page, just like so. And whatever ink gets on there is what we're gonna use to pick up our embossing powder. You do wanna make sure you drag it everywhere. I'm not sure letting the ink pad weight do it is enough, but we'll see. Ooh, that really wanted to drag. All right, don't overdo it. We're gonna stop right there. Can you tell this is the first time I've actually done the technique? I like to bring this up to you guys right off the bat like this. All right, embossing powder. This is clear. I'm double checking it because I've messed up crystal clear. And what you wanna do now is just put this all over the image, wherever it lands. If you miss some spots, don't even worry about it. It's supposed to look kind of distressed and worn. I think that's pretty good. I'll pick this stuff back up from my bottle. And now what you wanna do is you want to heat this. To keep from burning my hand, I'm gonna put a post-it note on the back of here and that'll help me hold it till I can get part of it done. And then I can pick it up. Don't overdo it. Let's take that little post-it note off. And you can see what we got here. Do you see the kind of icy or crackly feel that you get, kind of messy like that. I think that is beautiful actually. And so now we can put this on the front of a card. So I found some pieces I wanna use for my card. Let me show you. So this is the piece we just made. And then this piece is going to be what I mount this to. I think I'm gonna use foam tape to mount that, or I may mount this on foam. Um, let me give you the measurements of these guys. The piece I used to make this first image is three by four and a quarter. And then this one is going to be three and a quarter by four and a half. Let me double check. Three and a quarter by four and a half. That's right. So what I'll do, I'll glue this straight down and then I will mount the whole thing with foam. So just going to put some glue on the back side here. And then just mount this on the mat. Just like so. Don't worry too much if it's waving or wiggly right now. Get this glue down and then when you put it onto your card front, use plenty of foam to hold it down nice and smooth. Look how pretty that is. Can you see the crackle? Oh, so pretty. I'm gonna add my foam to the back. And like I said, because it's kind of warped from the, all the heat embossing, I'm gonna use more foam than I normally would. And if you were just mounting this straight down, you could just totally just glue it straight down and it'd be fine. So now I've got some pieces here. This gold foil dot piece I have here is a green and gold foil. And um, if you want any of the supplies, I'll have them listed in the link below. But this piece is what's gonna keep it very Easter colored for me and not getting too dark. And I cut this piece four by five and a quarter so I could mount this guy right to the center, just like so. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness, I love that. And then this is going to go right on top of here and I'm just gonna glue it straight down. See that pretty green? You can really see it on this side. Then this mounts onto our card front and it won't go all the way to the edge because the way I cut it, I'll have that little bit of a border. This is a beautiful technique, especially for this image. I think this is really, really pretty. And then we're going to put um, a piece on the inside as well. Now on the inside, I'm just gonna use some uh, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and I'm going to stamp the scripture from the set right in the middle. I did not mount this straight on my block, so it's kind of hard for me to get it straight on the page. I'm hoping I got close. Good thing is if I didn't, I can flip it over and do it again. Uh, I'm a little crooked. I'm gonna flip that over and do it again. We'll glue that part down. Nobody will see it. I'm gonna fix this on my block here and get this a little straighter. Use the grids if you need to, to help you out there. I just had that really crooked on there. Let's try it again. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has to do that sometimes. Let's straighten our page up. You can always use a positioner if you need to, but this works. All right, and this is gonna go to the inside here. This gives me room to write my sentiment. I could stamp something else. If I wanted to stamp Happy Easter or Easter greetings in here, I could. 
I just love these cards. And I'm going to tell you something. This um, particular card especially is a good masculine card. I know that the glitter and the, I mean, the foil and things like that may not seem like it, but I feel like this will work well for a pastor or for a music minister or your Sunday school teacher if you have a gentleman that teaches you. Isn't this beautiful for, for an Easter card? I think it's incredible. So I really appreciate, I do not remember who asked me to look into this technique. And the reason I don't is because it was during a live show and the chat has gone away. So if you requested me to show this, please tell me in the comments below so I'll know because I do not know. Look how gorgeous. I just think that's beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I cannot wait to see what you do with this technique. And be sure to check out those other videos. Give Show those guys some love because they did a really good job teaching me how to do this. Um, if you make a project using this black ice technique, share it with me on my customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. And if you need inspiration, there's over 2,000 posts there for you guys. It's kind of like our very own uh, Pinterest board. And you can see it on our website under customer gallery. Hey, thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye-bye.